Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are moving away from drawing with the mouse for just a minute. I swear to you it's going to come back before this unit is over. It's actually a big part of your final project. But today we're going to take a look at a really powerful function called map. Now we're going to get into what MAP does specifically, but first I just want to offer a challenge. So by now you should have opened up this starter code that was in your weekly work, and I'm going to ask that you all make sure you've gone to file duplicate. Please remember you don't see duplicate unless you are logged in to make sure you have your own copy. And also hit file save or um, command save or control save depending on your computer, just to make sure that you um, have this stored in your account. Now, there are directions here, but I just want to consider. Let's say that I want to make my background color change as I move my mouse right to left across the screen, or left to right across the screen, I'm sorry. Um, if I were to plug in just mouse X, it will change, but we're going to have an issue where right about here, it's white, as white as it'll go, and it, it never really changes after that. And what I would really like to have happen is I would like it to start black here, and by the time I am on this side, it's pure white, but it's, it's not pure white in the middle, like this whole space where nothing is happening. There should be constant change the entire time. Now, this is very doable for me, but it involves using this new function called map. Now, map is a function that utilizes a proportional relationship to make things happen. So it is going to look at, hold on guys, my computer's dying, let me move in. All right, much better. So map's proportional relationship. It's going to make it, we're gonna make a new variable and we're gonna save a mapped value to it. And that mapped value is going to look at something in our program that already has a range, that's already changing. And we're going to tell it, what was that original range? and what should it be remapped to? Then the computer is gonna do all the math and magic in between to make sure all of those middle values work. So let's try an example together. I'm gonna to make a variable called background color. And similar to um, things you guys have seen in the past, I am, oops, sorry, this should be a var. I forgot what class I'm teaching. Um, I am making this directly into my draw function and the reason I'm making this directly in draw is because it's not going to be used by my setup. It's not going to have a value at the beginning of the program. It's only going to have a value once I start moving my mouse. So um, I am making this background color variable and I am setting it equal to a mapped value. Now I'm just going to make a note for us. Map always takes an original variable, um, minimum range, max range of the original variable, and then a new min and new max. And I know for a lot of us this is really confusing, so just pay attention and try it, and then we will take a look at what the results are together. So the original value that I'm trying to change is mouse x, that's my first number, and I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little smaller so it's easy for y'all to see. And then I need to know what was the original range of mouse x. So up at the top of my screen, I can see that my create canvas goes all the way to 500. And I know that a canvas goes from 0 to 500. So that is my smallest and biggest value in mouse x. Now, there are lots of ways to like fidget with map and to make it so it's not the full range of mouse x, but I am concerned with the full range. I want to be able to move across my whole screen. So I'm going to go from 0 to 500. Now, I need to know what is the new range that this should go between. So even though my mouse is still going to have full motion from 0 to 500, when my computer gets higher than 255, I don't want that. Because one thing we know about color is color in RGB mode, which is default and happening right now, only goes up to 255. So I want to say that the new range of mouse X is 0 to 255. And what this is going to do is the map function is going to say, okay, if my mouse is here, it, it still gets to be zero. Those match. But now when my mouse is on this far edge, this is 255. This is not 500. The computer is going to see BG color and say, oh, 255, not the same as normal mouse X. This is a remapped version. And the nicest version is if my mouse is in one of these in-between spaces, it's going to decide, okay, cool, I'm somewhere between 0 and 255, and I'm going to do all the math to work it out to make sure that's nice and neat and even. You guys don't have to think about it. You just have to plug it in, and it does all that work for you. So let's go ahead and take mouse X out of background, and let's plug in BG color, and let's hit play and just see how it's different. So right now it's, it's very black, and as I start moving across the screen, you notice it's gray. 
But here's the cool part. I'm in the middle of the screen where before it was like pretty much solid white. Right now it's still very gray. And that's like the power of map at work. It's saying, let's take a look at where mouse X is, but instead of reporting the exact number, let's do some calculations and figure out proportionally where would it be between zero and 255. If I keep moving across, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And you can see with my background, it's like still not even pure white yet. Once I get to this edge, it goes into pure white mode. So this is map. It's super cool. It's super useful for making things work within small ranges. Um, this would not need to be 0 to 255. Maybe I never want it to hit white. Maybe I only want it to go to 220, which is that normal default background color. Now it does the same thing but it only reaches 220 when I get to this side. It never hits white. So those are how I would be setting up my ranges. Um, again, super powerful, super useful. I don't expect us to fully get it in like one shot, which is why you guys are gonna do a little bit of practice. So if you scroll down, you have a task to make three separate variables and use them in this rectangle that I've already set up on the screen. So you're going to make one variable that will control a stroke weight, one that will control width and height. You would just use the same variable in two locations and one to control the color in a fill based on mouse position. So one of these numbers, not all three, you just pick one and you would plug that in to have controlled by where the mouse is. Um, you guys will essentially be repeating the same process that I did on line 10, where you'll be making a brand new variable, you'll be mapping the values with either mouse X or mouse Y, and then you will be determining um, the original range and the new range set up for you by the problem. So when I get this, I should see three new variables, nice and neatly mapped and plugged in here to make cool things happen. If you have any questions, please let me know. Good luck, guys. You are going to be amazing.